Hi, I'm Sadma Benawan. In this video, I'm going to look at probable exam questions for the pre-release material paper 2.2, the train's pre-release. Now, as you remember, the task one implementation has the initialization of six one-dimensional arrays, and it has a for loop to display the data in those arrays. So naturally, the questions about task one are going to be related to storing data, the variables or the data structures that you're storing the data in. You might have a question like A, where it says all variables, constants, and other identifiers must have meaningful names. So that gives you a hint of how to answer. And here's the question. Describe the data structures you have used in task one to record the data related to the trains at the train station. So it might be a five mark question, four mark, six mark. Another question like B could be, many people like to visit the mountain, so the train station has decided to add an extra coach to every train. Which of your data structures will change? Show the updated data stored in the data structures. Or for example C, the station has decided there will be five trains going up the mountain and five trains going down the mountain every day. Which data structure will change? Show how the data structures you described in question, you know, in question A will change. So here's a possible solution to part A in blue. In task one, I declared and initialized six arrays. The arrays are one dimensional. Here are the names of the arrays and their data types and their initial values. So we have trains up times and it's initialized to the values 9, 11, 13, and 15 and trains down times initialized to 10, 12, 14, and 16. These two arrays hold the train times. They're of type integer. Trains up tickets is equal to 480, 480, 480, 480, and trains down tickets is equal to 480, 480, 480, 640. These are two arrays which store the number of tickets available that can be purchased to go up the mountain and down the mountain on each train respectively. These arrays are also of type integer. Finally, we initialize trains up money is equal to 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.0000.000.000 and trains down money is equal to 0 0.0000.000.000 and these arrays are of type real. We have declared them so they can store the amount of money that was made by each train ride respectively. The second question that we looked at B, you know, many people like to visit the mountain. Let's add an extra coach to every chain, train. Now, it's really important that you understand what the word coach means. So we have like in the pre-release in green, it says the pre-release description explains each train has six coaches with 80 seats available in each coach. So naturally, what's going to change is these two trains up tickets and trains down tickets, these arrays were originally, you know, declared and initialized to 480, 480, 480, 480, 480 and 480, 480, 480, 640. So now the new data that would be stored would be 560, 560, 560, 560, 560 and 560, 560, 560, 720. You know, to represent that each train has seven coaches with 80 seats in every coach, except the last train that has nine coaches with 80 seats in each coach. Part C question, for example, that there's five trains going up the mountain, five trains going down the mountain, what's going to change? Well, in the original pre-release, there was four trains going up and four trains going down. So all our one dimensional arrays had only four elements. The first element represented the first train, the second element, the second train, the third element, the third train, and the fourth element, the fourth train. Now, if we have five trains going up the mountain and five trains going down the mountain, then all our one-dimensional arrays will now contain five elements instead of only four elements. So here is the possibility of how the task one arrays may be initialized. For example, trains up times would be 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. Trains down times would be 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Trains up tickets, for example, would be all the trains going up the mountain have 480 seats. Trains down the tickets trains down tickets might have 480, 480, 480, 640, 640, and of course the money is still initialized to zero for all five elements going up and for all five elements going down the train. So those were some examples for task one questions. What about task two? I have a feeling that they're going to make ask you to write task two in the pre-release, okay, and they might also ask some questions like this. For example, name and describe two suitable validation checks you use to validate your inputs for task two. Each validation check must be different, so you need to write the name of your first validation check, a description of it, second validation check, description of it, and also for each of those validation checks, give an example of a suitable test data and explain why you chose that test data. So give like particular numbers or particular data, explain is that should that be accepted or not accepted by your program and test data for your second validation checks. 
So let's look at some possible answers. You could have a lookup check. In a lookup check, you have a particular set of values, a particular table, and only those tables are allowed. So for example, here we have trains up times are either 9, 11, 13, and 15. Any of those is accepted. Any other input is rejected. That's a lookup check. You could also have a presence check. The person has to select a time up. Okay, for example, another validation check would be a range check. If the person, you know, wants to pay for tickets, you can't pay, you can't um, ask for 500 tickets. You can't input number of tickets as 500. So now we've looked at the names of a couple of validation checks under the descriptions. Let's look at some possible test data. Okay. So we also have, of course, possible was presence check and length check, some possible test data. You could have, for example, nine. This is accepted data. It's normal data. The program should accept it and, you know, consider it as a proper input for a time going up the mountain. Um, for the second validation check, for the range check, if you put negative 100, this is erroneous data. You can't buy negative 100 tickets. This should be rejected by the program. Okay, so again, also I was talking about task two, um, think about the marking scheme, you know, you have to make sure that you have the right inputs and the validations, etc. That's it for task two. What about a possible question for task three? For example, like the task three past paper questions would be related to exactly what they ask you to show in task three. So here's one of the items they ask you to show how did your program calculate and output the total amount of money collected that day any programming statements you used in your answer must be fully explained so for total amount of money you would create a variable called you know total money equals 0, 0.0 for count in range 0 4 times total money equals total money plus trains up money of count plus trains down money of count print the total of money the total amount of money made today is total money so we have to describe the code so first we initialized a variable, it's of type real, it's called total money. And this variable stores all the amount of money collected from all the trains. Then we started a for loop. This for loop will iterate through all the train elements of the arrays, trains up money and trains down money. Any data stored in, in the elements of trains up money and trains down money will be added directly to the variable total money. Hence the total will be calculated after all the data is totaled in the variable total money, you can display it with print total money. So that's some of the examples of some past paper questions. If you'd like to have, you know, more past paper questions and their solutions, you know, click the link. I've put, you know, some more possible uh, past paper questions. So click the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.